Well, you know how I said in the last review that the Tomorrowverse wasn't quite there yet, but it was on the right path? I think they're starting to actually click now, because... Oh man, leave it up to Batman to really up the quality of this universe. Is it a little bit of bias? Probably. But I am a huge Batman fan. I am a huge fan of the long Halloween comic book that this is based off of. And it was a two-parter. First time they've done that since Dark Knight Returns. And, um... Holy flipping crap, it's another great Batman movie. I don't know how this pattern keeps happening. Like, every time there's, like, a rough start to one of these universes or a rough Justice League movie, almost immediately after follows a great Batman film. Or a very good Batman film. Like, after suffering through Justice League War, there was Son of Batman. Following Throne of Atlantis, there was Batman vs. Robin. Following vs. Teen Titans... Okay, Killing Joke doesn't count. Sorry, bad example. Uh, following... Justice League vs. The Fatal Five, there was Batman Hush. Following Superman at, uh, Man of Tomorrow was Soul of the Dragon, even though that one's not part of the, the Tomorrowverse, but it still counts. And now it is repeating yet again, because after the decent but kind of forgettable Justice Society World War II, now it's Batman The Long Halloween. The fourth time in just this month that this pattern has been repeated. And for the fourth time this month, it is a great Batman film. That's going to stand out as a highlight of the overall era of that specific filmography. Like, it was a highlight in the New 52, and it, it's definitely going to be a highlight in the Tomorrowverse. Because this movie is freaking great. Like, they did a great job adapting the comic books while also giving it a little bit of their own unique spin. There's a lot to talk about with this one. Probably one of my longest, lengthiest written reviews that I have ever done. So, strap yourselves in. This is going to be a long review. I hope you guys enjoy. Yep, the pattern has repeated yet again. Following two underwhelming beginning installments of the Tomorrowverse... In swoops the caped crusader with yet another excellent entry into his legacy to give it a much needed boost. Knowing the greatness of the source material, I was very excited to see how this was going to be adapted. Not to mention it's the first since Dark Knight Returns to be split into two parts. So they had a lot more time to properly bring it to the screen. In other words, they didn't have to do the stupid condensing bullcrap that most of these adaptations are stuck doing. And while it's not quite on the same level as DKR, and Part 2 is weaker than Part 1, we'll get to why, it's still a fantastic film altogether and easily the best movie in the Tomorrowverse so far. When a mysterious killer known as Holiday begins a murder spree on every major holiday of the calendar year against the Falcone family that's been causing Gotham City to be rife with corruption and crime, it's up to Batman, Gordon, Catwoman, and Harvey Dent to solve the mystery of who Holiday is unaware of the darkness already poisoning their inner circle. This one's got quite a voice cast, so let's quickly run through the returning actors first. Fred Tataskior is now Grundy, John DiMaggio is now Mad Hatter, Robin Atkins Downs is now Scarecrow, Julie Nathanson's now Gilda Dent, and Troy Baker reprises his role of Joker from Assault on Arkham and Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Then everyone else is new to the Tomorrowverse. Jack Quaid, from Scream 5, this came out the same year he did Scream 5, as Alberto Falcone, Jim Peary in, from Insomniac Spider-Man 2 as Sal Maroney, Amy Landecker from Doctor Strange as Barbara Gordon, Gary Leroy Gray from The Fairly Odd Parents, and most recently Fairly Odd Parents A New Wish. Yes, I will watch it and review it when I have time, okay? Don't ask me about it. As Pierce... Alistair Duncan is the new voice of Alfred, reprising his role from The Batman and The Batman vs. Dracula. David Desmalchian, who would later voice adult Flash in Justice League X Ruby Part 2, which we've already reviewed. 
and of course Polka Dot Man from the Suicide Squad as Calendar Man, Greg Chun from One Punch Man and Xenoblade Chronicles as Mickey Chen, Francis Callier from The Cleveland Show as Nurse Tamara, Layla Burzens from Hades and Amphibia as Sophia Falcone, Billy Burke from Fire Country as Commissioner Gordon, Alyssa Diaz from The Rookie as Renee Montoya, Katie Sackhoff, Sackhoff, apologies if I'm mispronouncing your name, from Battlestar Galactica as Poison Ivy, Naya Rivera from Glee as Catwoman. Sadly, it would be the final role of her entire career as she sadly passed away during production in 2020 due to the outbreak of COVID. Thus, the film is dedicated to her memory, both parts. Josh Dumel, Colonel Lennox from the Bay Transformers movies as Harvey Dent. And last but not least, the latest new voice of the Caped Crusader for the Tomorrowverse going forward, Dean Winchester of Supernatural himself, Jensen Ackles. And also played the main killer guy in the weird My Bloody Valentine remake. Just thought I'd throw that in there because that's the only other thing I know him for. Overall, the cast is excellent. From Rivera's heartbreaking final performance to Ackles doing a fantastic job as Batman. And especially Demel, whose spot-on portrayal of Harvey Dent is the biggest highlight of the movie. Like, Harvey Dent's the best part of the movie. Like, undoubtedly, best part of the movie. The storytelling here is also great, as this is more of a narrative-driven character study rather than an action-heavy fight fest. One of the things I also really loved about Dark Knight Returns. I can understand that disappointing some people, but me personally, I think it's a great direction, as the characters are all more than compelling enough to carry that narrative. And unless you've actually read the comic book, it's based on before that's based on beforehand, you won't see any of the twists coming. And the mystery itself is also great here, too. Pretty much unpredictable all the way to the end. This is further compounded by the writing, which is razor sharp here. Really diving into all these characters and what makes them who they are with both subtlety and complexity. And while it is held back a little bit by its PG-13 rating, I was surprised this one wasn't R, because they even dropped an F-bomb in part 2. They still make it as gritty and adult as they can get away with. In other words, all the things you love a Batman movie for. But by far, this film's biggest strength outside of Harvey Dent is its atmosphere, which is consistently ominous, unnerving, and leaves the viewer in a continuous sense of discomfort that almost never lets up, like the best of horror movies do. And then there's its biggest improvement over the other Tomorrowverse films, its animation. Sure, the general style is mostly the same as before, but with the darker colors, it looks a lot more fluid and smooth, which in turn makes it feel far less cheap and much less jarringly obnoxious. Like, this art style works amazing with the darker colors. But for some reason, with the bright colors, it looks very cheap. I don't know how that happened, but that's just what I've been able to tell from what I've seen. It looks really crappy and cheap, with the bright colors, but when you darken the colors and put a little more emphasis on the lines around the characters without resorting to being un obnoxiously bright, it works a lot better and looks great because of it. I don't know if that's just a me thing, but that's just something that I've managed to observe. That being said, though, it's not all perfect. The opening of Part 2 feels almost entirely disjointed, as Part 1 doesn't lead into it at all. As great as Dent's descent into madness is in Part 2, I mean, two faces on the cover, it's not exactly a spoiler. It's also becoming overdone at this point, as this is at least its fourth iteration of it. Like, we've seen this story done so many times in many other Batman media that it is becoming a little bit tiring at this point it's still well done don't get me wrong but it's something that we've already seen before a few times so i just hope going forward they stop relying on that and try to do something new and different not a big problem just a little minor thing the rogues gallery of established villains are all constantly fighting for screen time especially in part two like, this is, what, this is, in my opinion, Part 2's biggest problem. It tries to juggle so many of Batman's iconic rogues gallery villains, 
all at once. In the last 30 minutes. And it, uh, it feels forced, is what I'm saying. It feels a little bit forced and contrived and like they were running out of ideas. I mean, it's cool seeing all these villains, yes, but they're not all that effective. I don't know, maybe it's just, again, a, probably just a me thing. Both parts combined together is the longest Tomorrowverse film thus far, and one of the longest DC animated films I've ever seen, at almost three hours. Which hurts the rewatchability a bit. And the Batman 2022 live-action movie has the same problem. Yeah, as much as I do really love this movie, I can't deny that this movie is obnoxiously long. Like, three hours. Like, it... Here's the thing. It does a great job with that runtime, but the problem is that it just doesn't quite utilize it to its fullest capacity like there's a few scenes that do feel a little bit unnecessary or again with all the rogues gallery villains fighting for screen time in part two feeling a little bit rushed like i don't know what it is like again the batman 2022 has the same problem it's not a big problem but it's still something we're pointing out because usually with me when it comes to rewatchability it's always going to be higher if a film is shorter or if its pacing is so fast that it makes it fly by. And for the most part, the Batman 2022 also did that surprisingly well. But when it's a longer movie, I kind of have to be in the right mood for it in order to dedicate my time to watching it again. Again, it's not entirely the film's fault, but... That's just how it is with me. I always prefer shorter movies over longer movies. Because that's the way that I grew up. I grew up watching a lot of shorter movies that were one hour, two hours tops. Not ones that try to push three or four. <clears throat> Snyder Cut. Just a personal thing. Three hours is a very, very long time for a movie. And the constant time skipping of the different holidays can cause a, a little bit of whiplash in a few spots. Yeah, this movie has a lot of time jumping because the entirety of it's supposed to take place over one calendar year. So you are going to have a lot of moments where they're jumping between the different months and holidays and it can feel like something's missing. Like it's a bit too fast of a transition or something feels missing, like some kind of context that they could have built in between that. Overall, though, The Long Halloween is still a great Batman film and a well-done adaptation of the source material. Sure, it could be better, and Part 2 is not as good as Part 1. But altogether, it's an excellent narrative-driven character study that most Batman fans should be more than satisfied with. More than worth a watch. So, with all that said, let's get to my final verdict. In a review that is far shorter than the one I did for Dark Knight Returns because there's not as much to talk about and because I'm not doing full spoilers anymore. So, my final verdict for The Long Halloween as a whole, both parts together, is going to be an 8 out of 10. It's still a great Batman movie. I highly recommend giving it a watch. Easily the best movie of the Tomorrowverse that we have looked at so far. But it's hurt by the long runtime, part 2 having some issues and... Rewatchability being a bit middling. Outside of that, it's still a great Batman movie, and I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already. <sighs> well, that was a long review, and probably one of the longest reviews I've done in this entire marathon. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this almost every single day. And I'll see you guys next time when we take a wild swerve in the raw in the weird different direction. I'll tell you all about next time with Catwoman Hunted. Yeah. Yeah.